Hey, what's up guys? It's Adam again. Let's cover the audio on my Raspberry Pi board. The stuff I'm covering here works on pretty much any Raspberry Pi project needing audio, so feel free to use it on your own projects. All right, there's a bunch of ways to get audio from the Pi. The one I'm gonna show here is pretty close to the headphone circuit on the Pi 3. Let's start though with a schematic from what I think is the original Raspberry Pi, cause it's the simplest to explain. So the Pi gets analog headphone audio from the PWM pins. Here's the Raspberry Pi, and here are those two pins labeled PWM0 and PWM1. They route over here to a few components that make up the low pass and high pass audio filters, and then they lead straight to the headphone jack. And here's what that signal looks like on one of those pins. This is PWM when there isn't any audio playing. It just sits at a 50% duty cycle, and when the audio is played, here's what that looks like. I won't go super in depth describing PWM. There's lots of good videos out there if you want a full understanding. Here's just a quick overview of what it's doing. What it does is switch on at a set rate and then it varies the amount of time it stays on. For example, let's say it switches on once a second, making the frequency one hertz. What is changing is how long the pin stays on during that second. This is PWM with a 50% duty cycle. So in our example, it's on for half a second, then off for half a second, and it just keeps repeating this every second. And this is a 75% duty cycle, so it's on for three quarters of a second, off for one quarter of a second. What you can see here is that no matter what the duty cycle is, the pin still switches back on at the same time. To demonstrate how this is making audio, I'm gonna show you the PWM pin signal and also the signal coming out of the headphone jack of the Raspberry Pi. The PWM is varying the duty cycle to create the analog audio, and the low pass filter is averaging the voltage out to create something that actually looks like audio. That average voltage can be calculated in relation to the duty cycle on the PWM. The pins on the Raspberry Pi are switching between 3.3 volts when they're on and zero volts when they're off. So when the duty cycle is 50%, the low pass filter will average the voltage to half of 3.3 volts, which is 1.65 volts. When the duty cycle is 75%, it'll average to three quarters of 3.3 volts, which is about 2.5 volts. The easiest way to demonstrate this is to play an audio file that's just a sine wave. The upper peak of the sine wave happens at the highest duty cycles, and the lower peak happens on the lowest duty cycles. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too much. Again, there's lots of good videos on PWM and digital to analog converters. Check them out and blast me in the comments if I messed something up. All right, now that that's out of the way, I want to describe all the extra circuits and why they're needed. So here's a schematic of the Pi Zero. This portion is the DC to DC converter and it drops the five volt USB input power down to 3.3 volts and 1.8 volts for the CPU, the pins, SD card, Wi-Fi, and anything else you're using. And here's the data sheet for the DC to DC converter. And it shows the spikes and dips that happen to the voltage when there's a change in power draw on the 3.3 volt output. These changes in power draw happen every time the Pi is doing work, like accessing the SD card or the CPU, and it makes the 3.3 volt line pretty noisy. As an example of that, here's the 3.3 volt line during boot up. What this means is that there's a lot of noise on the 3.3 power line, and since it powers the PWM pins, you're gonna hear every bit of that noise on your speakers. To fix this, the PWM signal has to be isolated from that noisy 3.3 volts and powered using something cleaner. And that's exactly what they did with the Raspberry Pi 3 using a different power chip which has a separate 3.3 volt clean power output, and they pass the PWM through a buffer that's attached to that clean output. The buffer just copies the signal. When the PWM is 3.3 volts, the output on the buffer is 3.3 volts. When the pin is zero volts, the output on the buffer is zero volts. 
And I did the same thing on my board, so it has a buffer that's powered by a low noise regulator, a linear regulator. The signal stays the same with the exception that the voltage isn't bouncing around. It's a stable 3.3 volts when switched on and a stable zero volts when switched off. Also, since the power on the Pi's pins is limited, the buffer boosts the strength quite a bit. Here's a comparison of the Pi's PWM and the buffered PWM. The Pi's PWM is shown here in pink and the buffered is in yellow. The PWM on the Pi certainly doesn't look very square, which it should. The uh, Pi may be to blame for this, but my PCB routing could also be to blame. Uh, either way, the buffer fixes it since the change in duty cycle still leads to basically the same change in voltage and therefore the output of the audio is the same. So that's the most complicated part. Next part is to add the low and high pass filter so the audio is cleaner. The filter I used on this board was the same as the original Pi, but according to the guys who made the audio driver, the Pi 3 version may be better tuned for this. The last bit is the amplifier. And I went with a single channel PAM 8302 since the audio on this project is just mono and this chip is very cheap. There's a link below showing this whole circuit on Easy EDA. Check out link number eight to see that. All the components here cost less than a dollar, probably closer to 50 cents. So you can use this circuit to clean up and boost audio on any Pi project without adding too much cost. Thanks for watching guys. Was this one too detailed, not detailed enough? Let me know in the comments and I'll get to work on the next one. Thanks, see you guys later.